In this video, you're gonna learn about the 12 proven steps that you can use to manifest abundance and to create success. Create anything that you want. Bend reality. Go from where you are now to where you wanna go. Are you feeling stuck? Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling that you're not getting anywhere in your life? Well, I've been there. I was broke, I was sick, I was depressed, and I was not happy and I felt like I was not going anywhere. These are 12 proven steps that I personally use to be able to bend reality. To so pay close attention, what you're about to learn can transform your life forever. That and more is coming up. So here's the manifesting process. It's a 12 step process and it goes like this. Dreams, inspiration, idea, concept, visualization, modeling, blueprint, intention, getting resourceful, action plan, prioritization, optimization, testing phase, evaluation, retest, evaluate, and scale. Okay, I know that went by quickly. I'm gonna go over each one, each 12 step right now. How do you start this manifestation process? First step is have a dream or get inspiration. So what's the difference between a dream and inspiration? You have a dream, it's inside you. It happened inside you. An inspiration, probably happen with you observing something externally than being inspired by it internally. Dream inspiration can be an extract thing. Let's say you had a dream, it didn't make sense, but it gave you some inspiration about something. It's very abstract, it's nothing concrete, right? So that's the step, first step. We have a dream, we have an inspiration, it can come from inside or it can come from outside that turned inside, and it's something kind of like abstract. That's where it starts. I mean, you hear stories like this in the Bible a lot, right? You had a dream and an angel came down and he did such and such thing, it's kind of weird, but then it turned into something else. It's like a, it's like a fable, it's like a story. And that the abstract concept gave you a dream or gave you inspiration, okay? So the first step, that's easy. Second step is now you turn that abstract concept into something more concrete. So now it turns into an idea or a concept. Now you have the end in mind. You say, okay, I see what I want to be or what I want to achieve, what I want manifest, and I see the end, I see the end goal, okay? And now it becomes more concrete, and that's also internal, inside your mind, that's step two. Are you following? Step three is visualization. It's also internal. So now you take that idea and concept, and you make it more detailed. You start to have clarity. So that end goal that you wanted to achieve, you have a clear picture of how it feels, or what it looks like, what's it smell like, right? Using all your senses to paint a very clear picture about what you want to achieve or what you want to manifest. And using that, you can start to reject that idea or that visualization, imagination, and consciousness into reality, okay? So that's when you can start projecting it into reality using meditation, using our technology to help you do that in your meditation. So once you have that visualization, then next step is modeling. Go to somebody or find someone or something that already exists that's very similar to what you want. Does it exist? Let's say that you want to uh, buy a new house. Did somebody else buy a house like that? So what process was implemented for them to get there? What can you do and what you cannot do, okay? Let's say somebody got the house, but they won the lottery. Can you do that? No. But let's say somebody bought the house, but then he, let's say he got a mortgage, and then he got good credit, and then he's got uh, maybe um, a good job or a high income, and he got down payment. Can you do that? Yeah. Yes. Maybe you can, maybe you can. Okay? But now you assess what is the process that the person got, did to get that house. Okay? So modeling, model after somebody or something that already has gone through the process to get what you want or to manifest what you want. Now that you have that, create a blueprint. It could be a map, it could be a plan, it could be a process, it could be an overview or a big picture or the timing that goes with it of what you want. Now you have a blueprint. How are you gonna get there? What's the steps? So you turn something internal, which was just a idea, into something external. Now, it's, now you can see it. Now somebody else can visually or externally and verify it. And say, okay, I can see your blueprint, I can see your map. Here's the list of steps. Here's the overview, here's the picture. So it's external now. And now you are able to know what your intention is. You say, here's my intention. And it's a map, I can see it. Then the next step is getting resourceful, asking questions, having really effective questions. Like, okay, what do I need? What skills do I need? What resources do I need? Who do I need? 
Do I need people to help? Do I need other people's expertise? And ask yourself, how do, are you going to require, acquire those resources? What prerequisites are needed? Are there things I need to do before I do these things? Do I need to know something? Do I need to learn something? Okay, what are the steps needed to reach the goal? Start from the end and work backwards. And eventually, you have this whole steps going from where you are now to where you uh, end up. Or you can go both ways and eventually meet in the middle, right? So the key is to build steps. Find out what needs to occur to move forward. What, what needs to happen now for you to move forward? Those steps that you put on the thing, is it something you can control or is it something that you can just influence? That's very important because if all of them is based on just how much you can influence, then you don't have direct control. Okay? If you, what's better, to have control or to have influence? Control. control, right, because it's direct. You have con direct control of it. So ask yourself these questions and get resourceful. That's step six. So step seven is create an action plan. Now you know what you need. Now you can list all the actions that you need to take. What, you know, how are you going to get those uh, resources? Breaking down the steps to reach your goal. Set up milestones, okay? This is, I mean, there's a lot of stuff teaching people how to do this. This is the part, but they're missing the other parts, right? But we all know about this. Have backup plans. Have plan B, plan C, plan D. Have preventative measures. Figure out where your timing is, okay? So action plan. Step eight is to prioritize and optimize, okay? What do you do? You have a list. See, a lot of people get overwhelmed. They, they come to me and say, oh, I'm so overwhelmed. I've got so many things I need to do. And there's so many things on my do-to list. There's so many steps. And I don't think I, I overwhelm. You get discouraged because it's such a big, you know, gigantic task that is insurmountable. And I'll tell them, OK, did you prioritize or optimize? And they don't know what that means. So here's how you prioritize or optimize. You prioritize by impact urgency, resource requirements, and cultural over influence. What do you have direct in control of that has high impact and needs to be done sooner with minimal effort, time, and risk? Okay, that's the question you want to ask. Start to prioritize, right? This is, okay, so, so what do you want? Do you want something that's, let's say you make a list of things you want to do. What's, what do you do first? High impact or low impact? Something that's going to make a high impact you want to do first, right? Make sense? Easy. Urgency, something that's urgent or something that's not urgent. Which one do you want to do first? Urgent. urgent, okay? Because that's why you got to, it's urgent. You got to do it now. You got to do it as soon as possible. Low resource requirements. You want to do something that's going to require a lot of resources, like time, money, and effort, or you want to do something that doesn't cost money, that um, is very easy to do, and, and can do it quickly. Which one do you want to do? The easy one. Easy, quick, and low risk, okay? So you want to do that first. Control and influence, like I mentioned. Do you want to do something that you have that control, direct control over or do something that you only have influence over? Direct control. direct control, because then the result is more predictable. List and order, reorder and prioritize your, your action steps according to these criteria. Then you can figure out what is the top two things you're going to do today or top two things you're going to do this week. Instead of now you have like 100 things on your list, now you only have to do is just focus on maybe a couple things at a time. And those things will be the most impact, the easiest to do, and then make you move a lot faster. Now you're going to do a testing phase. You're going to make a prototype, a proof of concept, or a trial run. And just do it. Okay, take a step and just test it out. A lot of times in life, we think that it's like do or die. And that we get so you know, stressed out because we think that if we fail, then that's the end of it. Okay, but it's not. If you fail, it's just the beginning. If they fail, it's just a step towards success. Okay, so you just change the mindset, is that everything is a test. I'm just testing it out, I'm just trying it out. And where, where does that concept come from, testing? What's that word, it starts with C? Curiosity. Curiosity, right? So when you keep curious and have that mindset of curiosity and test, now things become not so stressful, even if you fail, right? Okay, because now it becomes more like a game even. Games are fun. Curiosity is fun. But then, and then failure is not fun, but now if you turn it into just a test, it decreases your fear level. Okay? If that's what's stopping you from doing things and being active and taking action and doing things, then just change your mindset. Think of it as just a test. It's a prototype. That's all you're doing. Okay? Next, once you have that, evaluate the results. Ask yourself, how did you feel after doing this? Did you gain energy? Did you lose energy? Did you involve ing integration? Did you integrate your heart, mind, soul, spirit? If you only involve your mind, did you only involve your spirit? Was it aligned? Was it aligned with your strength? Is it aligned with your purpose? Is it aligned with your passion? Is it aligned with the people around you? 
Was it ineffective or was it effective? Did it work or did it not? Did it get you closer to your goal or not? Did it get closer to your manifestation? So ask yourself, okay, what was your intention when you started it? Is that still true after now experiencing this test, after this test? Did you find something out that you didn't know before to change your intention? Then ask, who's responsible for these results? Is it somebody else or is it you? What worked in what you did? What didn't work? And how might you do things differently now? These are all questions for evaluating. And many people lose, miss the evaluation. They just keep going, 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 failing, 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 going, repeating, failing, failing. So what does he call that? Doing something the same over and over again, expecting a different result. That's the definition of insanity. Okay? So because they're not evaluating. Does it make sense? If you evaluate it and ask yourself these questions and then change your approach, then you can actually move forward, not be stuck. So the next one is retest and reevaluate. So now that you evaluate, go back and test again. And then reevaluate again. And what do you do after that? Retest and reevaluate. Retest, reevaluate. Keep doing that. Once you perfect the process, what's the next step? You scale. What does it mean to scale? Do you have a formula or process with a predictable chance of success? Ask yourself that question. Okay? If it's got a 90% chance of success, that's pretty good. Or even an 80% chance of success. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be good. It has to be predictable. So now that you have that, is it externally verifiable? Can somebody say, yes, this is working? Yes, this is successful, right? If it's just happening in your mind, <laughs> then it's not really verifiable, and you duplicate that, then you're screwed, right? So make sure it's externally verifiable. Maybe it's, make sure somebody else can say, look at what you did, look at your process and say, yes, this is 80% successful or 90% successful, or this is good, this works. Okay, if that's true, then can you make it repeatable? Can you do it again? Yeah, if you have a process, of course you can do it again. That's the whole point, right? And can you duplicate it? Yeah. Can you teach somebody else to do it? Yeah. Then that means you can, awesome. So now you have something that you can scale, something that you can multiply, and you can repeat over and over again and get the same result or to get a very predictable result at the end. All right, so those are the 12 steps of the manifestation process, okay? And you can use this for basically anything in your life. Hey, do you like what you're watching so far? I've got a lot more content for you that you're gonna love. So make sure you go and click these videos here and watch them next. If you haven't subscribed to this video, click the subscribe button here. And if you haven't taken the Qi Energy score, click the link in the description below to take the quiz.